for pride and country, for orgullo y patria. In the blue corner, the challenger, wearing blue trunks with black trim. His record, 44 wins, three losses, 26 wins by knockout. En la esquina azul, el retador, con 44 victorias, tres perdidas, 26 de sus victorias por knockout. His weight, uneven, 122 pounds, pesando 122 libras, former two-time champion of the world from Brooklyn, New York, Junior Poison Jones. In the red corner, wearing white trunks with black trim, undefeated in 30 professional bouts with 24 of his wins by knockout. En la esquina roja, invicto en 30 peleas profesionales, con 24 de sus victorias por knockout. He weighed in at 121 and three quarter pounds, pesando 121 y tres cuartas libras, from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico, the WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, Eric Terrible Morales. To both of you. You've both had your instructions in the dressing room. May it be a good contest and may the best man win. Good luck. For both no, fighters no problem. No problem. at this stage of their careers, Junior Jones put it best to repeat, it's win it all or lose it all. Junior Jones can box and he can punch. Can box. I'm not sure, Roy, that he can punch at the same level with Jones. Well, he throws pretty good punches. He stopped. What's, he stopped um, the old guy that he took. The, Daniel Zaragoza. Yeah, he stopped Zaragoza with body shots, so he showed that he could punch. But this is the only the second time he's been in a big fight like this. Junior's been in these several times. The cheers, the spontaneous eruptions will all be for El Terrible, Eric Morales. Neither man has landed much of anything in the first 50 seconds of the fight. Morales sneaking in a right hand lead. was surprisingly aggressive in the opening moments of the fight until Jones landed that punch. Larry, you made an interesting point yesterday after we met with Morales. You said that he looks to you like a fighter who struggles to make weight. Elaborate. Well, he's so gaunt. Uh, but on the other hand, when you're 22 years old, you can get away with, with such things as making weight. As you get older, it's harder. But he's, he's, it looks like he has as much body fat as a, as a nail. <laughs> like Jones is the one who actually gained the most weight, though. That's true. So it wasn't too easy for him, either. And you're missing with the right hand. by Jones Jr. trying to establish his jab. Morales staying at a distance and making Jr. stretch that jab out early on. But Jr. can't wait for Morales because Jr. is not the waiting type fighter. The guy who pushes the issue is going to have the advantage here. And Morales sets up Roy 
Jones. Look at where he holds his left hand. Has Junior got an opening for a right hand here? No, it's not quite low enough for that, but what Junior is doing is Junior is countering Morales' straight right hand with his own straight right. He's caught Morales twice with that punch. Both times the man stunned Morales a little bit. And Morales showed in the first minute and a half disappears after the counter right hands and it was a cautious final minute of round number one again our interpreter in Morales' corner will be Ray Torres Okay, you got it. Go to his right. Move around. Make sure you walk to the right so you get away from his right. But that, you, you gotta faint him. You, you gotta attack him. Don't risk him. Oh, keep, put your head down. You're starting to put it up in the air. Okay. All right? Your head's high. Don't go don't, don't left on us now. Okay, just follow the marbles, baby. All right? Straight back. 22 punches connected for Morales by CompuBox numbers in round number one. 15 of them were jabs. Jones landed more power shots, likely because of that counter right hand that Roy Jones described to you. You have Roy Jones Jr. doing commentary on Ivy Jr. Jones. So stick with us. We had two bulls in the first fight, two bull fighters in the second fight. One of these fights will get it right. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I think is bad here is that I don't think this is the pace that Eric Morales really wants to fight you yet. Junior has the most experience, and I think this is his pace of fighting. Good right hand that Morales took. known as a slower starter. He came on in the late rounds in his biggest win against Zaragoza. Now Morales goes back to attacking and lands a right uppercut as he forces Jones back against the ropes. I told you whoever pushed the issue here is going to have the advantage. Uh, what Morales wants to do is to try to test Jones's endurance which he has had a, a problem with from time to time in the past by pressing him early. I think Jones caught referee Larry O'Connell in the midsection as <laughs> O'Connell was trying to break him up, and O'Connell took the punch pretty well. That's why I said whoever takes the lead has the advantage in this fight. Now Eric has a mouse on his right eye, under his left eye, under his left eye, yeah. There's another right hand for Jones, right under the left eye of Eric Morales. That mouse is turning red. It's not flowing with blood yet, but it may open up. A slippage, and once again, that's the slippery corner. That's the one where you saw Rio slip several times in the first fight. Tijuana get their money's worth. Junior featherweight division, Larry, 
Uh, Bumbo is unknown here. We may fight here later in the fall. He's had more title defenses than anybody else with his belt. There's Morales and Jones, Kennedy McKinney, Barrera, who is on his comeback trail, and Wayne McCullough, who is going to be fighting Prince Hamed at the end of October. And we told you, every fighter in the 126-pound weight class with any identity whatsoever is looking for the fight against Prince Nassim. Likewise, all the 122-pound fighters. Listen, you're squaring up a little bit too much. Okay, yeah. Show him that jab. When you get on the inside, put that foot there and start letting them uppercuts go, okay? All right, baby. Oh. Well, the ref has a good stomach. Oh, he worked a little bit with that blow. <laughs> According to CompuBox numbers through round two, Eric Morales far more accurate with the jab, landing 26 out of 46, 57 percent. Junior Jones only 12 of 77. Yet Harold Letterman scores the first two rounds for Jones. Interpreter Ray Torres telling us that between rounds, Eric Morales' father, Jose, manager and trainer in his corner, asked Eric to get closer to Junior Jones, not fight from so far outside. Yes, because he has to push the issue. You can't stand out there and let Junior have his weight. He has to experience already, and if you let him fight his fight, you're not going to beat him like that. And Junior got a chance in there to bust Morales with another counter right hand and landed it right on the cheekbone, which is swelling under Morales' left eye. Yeah, but Eric came out with some good combinations of his own just now. Morales has delivered some punishment in the first three rounds. He's taking some in return. Junior's not throwing as much this round. He can set it up with the left. Oh, hard right to the body by Jones. A beautiful body shot. Morales folded into the ropes by that right hand shot right in the middle of the belt. I think he may be trying to let Junior punch himself out a little bit, though. Right! Stand back, stand back. I'm under a, a similar impression, though, that he feels he's a little stronger and in better condition. of what Kennedy McKinney was able to do against Junior Jones in New York when he weathered the Jones storm and then knocked out a weakened junior who, he, who admitted himself afterward that he was punched out. Hands out. Let go, let go, let go, let go. Connell warning Jones for holding Morales' right arm. Junior was working the body with the right hand, and now he's got a trickle of blood coming from Morales' nose. Against McKinney, he, he dropped McKinney early in the fight and got reckless here. He's under much greater control. Trying to earn it by fighting a more disciplined fight. The 
but he's in there with a young, strong, well-conditioned and, and very well-schooled fighter. And in round three, Morales was the more accurate punter, landing 24 of 53, according to CopyBox numbers. Fight. Jones, 14 of 54. Put your head, son. Box up. Julian Chavez is the best thing for working oh. for him right now. Good left hook inside by Jones. He landed a right cross flush and a left hook flush. Morales has certainly shown that he can take a punch in these first few rounds. Yeah, and Morales has very good ring posture here. He's keeping up good with Julian. He's not getting too close and he's not staying too far back. Yeah, he, he seems to be in better balance. This is a kid Roy, who was raised in a home that had a gym. His father had been a fighter. He's been fighting since he's five. He has beautiful balance. The other thing that helps him is he doesn't overcommit to his punches. That's one of the things that Vander Holyfield is trying to get Junior Jones to respond to. Holyfield telling Jones, if you don't overcommit to your jab, you'll be in a better position to knock a man out with the right hand. Watch your hands. Afraid! Stand back, stand back, stand back. One more time. Come on, fight. Get your heads up. Fight for it. Box up. Jones keeps telling Holyfield he's going to break out a 10-pound can of kick-ass on him. <laughs> for him late in the fight. He just held his composure throughout. He had his composure, waited for Junior to tire and start making mistakes. Junior started making mistakes with his balance, started leaving himself open after the big punches, and that's how Eric caught him. And if the rumor Larry heard was true, <laughs> somewhere there's a guy who just lost a $100,000 bet on Junior Jones. <laughs> This opens up for young Eric Morales. Yeah. Let's take a look at the knockdown. This is not the stoppage that ended the fight, but rather the knockdown that set it up. Clean right hand that hurt Junior badly. He's trying to hold on. Another right hand on top of the head just sort of pushed him over. That was the punch that really did the damage. One of those right hands, in addition to helping facilitate the knockout, opened a big cut over Junior's left eye. Yeah, I think it was the one that he caught him with in the beginning. He caught Junior trying to throw a right uppercut from the outside, which was very dangerous. Oh, 
Good performance by Eric, Eric Romale, uh, Morales. Now let's look at the stoppage. And by our clock, this would have been, I believe, within the last five seconds of the round. Right there, he got caught with another big punch, Jim. The referee thought he was through, I thought he was through, and I think it was a good stoppage. He was trying to fight back, but he was hurt. And you know, those kind you have to respect. I think O'Connell did a very professional job throughout, including taking the body shot from Junior Jones uh, in the one break. <laughs> and uh, I, I think you can indeed say that this was a professional stoppage. Yes, it was. It isn't the referee's job to follow the clock. It's the referee's job to protect fighters. That's right, that's his first job. All right, let's go to Danny Valdivia for the official particulars. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner by technical knockout in two minutes, 55 seconds of the fourth round. And still the WBC Super Bantamweight Champion of the World, the one.